Hello everybody, Scott Friesen here at Simpletivity. And if you clicked on this video, chances are you are already an Asana user or at the very least you are considering using Asana as your own personal task manager or perhaps to manage projects with other collaborators. They could be other team members, people that you are working with on a regular basis. Well, today I want to share with you five of my favorite tips to getting the most out of Asana. A few simple things that you can apply so you can be more effective and you can be more efficient as you manage all of your projects, as you manage all of your tasks here within Asana. We're gonna start off quite small and work our way up to a few more complex things, but they're all very, very simple to implement. And some of them you may have heard of before, some of them may be so simple, you'll wonder how you've ever worked with Asana without knowing them. I know that's the case for me, and I wanna thank ahead of time some Simpletivity users for providing some of these tips in one of my previous videos. So to get started, I want to start off with sections within Asana. You know, when I first was introduced to Asana, I was very impressed that you could add these sections. You can separate out your tasks. And here in this particular example, you know, I've got a, a phone call section. I've got a pending section, things that I'm, I'm waiting for here. And I've got uh, some office tasks, right? So, you know, you can sort of view these as folders, a nice way to segment the different tasks all within this particular project. But when I look at this, I'm probably saying, to myself, you know, pending, that should probably be, you know, maybe at the bottom of the list here. I don't, I don't want it to be here. So let's, let's take the pending section and we're going to grab it and I'm going to move it here to the bottom and then, wait a minute, Oh, that just grabbed the section. And I was really puzzled when I first attempted this, is that I just assumed that, you know, everything else that was underneath that section would come with it. Well, there's actually a very simple, a very easy way of doing this. First, start by clicking the section itself, and then hold Shift on your keyboard and select the last item in that section. And just like you would in many other applications, including Excel or a spreadsheet, it has selected everything there. Now I can select that section. I can drag it down to where I want it to be. And now I've got my entire pending section, including all of the items that were listed down below. Now, of course, I can still move these individual items. I can move them out of a pending state and put them somewhere else in this particular list or within this particular project. But just select, again, the section header. You're going to hit Shift on your keyboard and then select what else you would like to move. And I can move pending all the way to the top of this list if I like. So a great way, a very simple way of moving your sections around. A big shout out to Jeff Brown who actually shared this tip with me on a previous Simpletivity video. Now the next one is also rather simple, but I find it very useful myself. I'm just going to change to another project here for a, uh, for a second. So, you know, it can be very helpful to see your entire list of tasks here on the left hand side of the screen while you are working with an individual task on the right hand side of the screen, right? It can be helpful to see how do you want to change the wording of this or what other information do you want to add in relation to some other tasks over here. But I'll have to admit, sometimes I feel that this view is a little cramped, right? If I've got multiple images or files, perhaps I've got a long list of comments between myself and another team member, I find that this view can be a little cramped. Well, there's two ways that you can view this in full screen. The first one is if you click the little more, the little three dots here, and at the very bottom, Bottom, there is a full screen option, right? So now I can see everything within this particular task in full screen. And I like this view a lot. It's just a lot more comfortable for myself personally, especially if I might be spending a few minutes with this task. But there's another and even easier way of doing it. And yes, it's telling us right there, and that is tab X. So regardless of which task that you have highlighted, just select tab X on your keyboard and you will see that task in full screen. Here's another one where I've got an image and maybe I've got some more information down below. I can see it 
in a nice comfortable view just tab x again and i'm back here so you know you can toggle back and forth tab x for a full screen and tab x to get back to the default view I have started using this shortcut on a very regular basis, and I find that you'll probably find some good uses for it as well. Again, I'd like to thank Wasim Tahir, who shared this tip with me on a previous uh, YouTube video. Thank you so much for uh, showing me how to get this full screen view beyond just clicking this more button, you know, having additional clicks. I can just hit tab X and go back and forth whenever I like. All right, now the third one is maybe no, not so much of a tip, but something that I think goes underutilized. And that is when we want the ability to add a particular task to multiple projects. Okay, so often you may have something that is applicable to beyond just the project that you're currently working on. And maybe in this case, I've got something here titled Submit Budget for quarter three and quarter four. But this is something that needs to be done for all of my projects, or perhaps it's a task that I want to see visible in all of my projects because it's applicable to all of them, not just to one of them. It's applicable to uh, more than just this one. Maybe it's applicable to every one of my projects. Maybe it's just applicable to a handful of them. So within your task, once you highlight the uh, project area up here, you'll see that there is a plus button or a plus icon. By selecting this plus icon, you get a new field where you can start to type in the name of your project. So here I want to add this to my new website development. And while I'm here, I'm going to add it to yet another one, my client consulting project. So now this individual task is now going to appear in not only my personal to-do list Asana project, it's going to show up in my new website development and my client consulting project. Again, this may seem rather simple, but you would be surprised at how many other project management tools do not support this type of functionality. And it's just as easy, of course, to remove this task from those projects as well. If I just hover over the new website development project, I can select the X and it is no, it will no longer appear in that particular project. All right, tip number four, and this has to do with something, again, which I think is underutilized amongst Asana users. And we're going to get out of the list view for just a moment. We're going to go over here to the progress tab. Now, if you haven't selected the progress tab, I think you're missing out on a very helpful feature. If you only use Asana for yourself, well, this may not be necessary, but there's real power when you collaborate with other individuals or with other team members. And under progress, Asana gives you the opportunity to provide a status update. Now here you can see they actually go beyond just adding uh, text information. You can actually use a traditional traffic light system. And if I hover over these colors, you can see that green is going to mean that this project is on track. Uh, yellow, this project is progressing, but there are some risks worth addressing. And red would mean this project is not on track and needs attention. Now, they're not actually going to see that helpful text down below. Um, so you can select these different colors and, and give your own description. Or if you don't want to add a color, you can just add text directly, right? I can just say, uh, you know, great job. Uh, thanks uh, for working late last night. Okay, and I can say set status. So in this sense, I'm not so much, uh, I guess, updating a status, but I'm sending a message to everyone attached to this project, right? Because this message, uh, it's still, I guess, a status update. I'm, I'm complimenting my team and I want them all to see it, not just a particular task, not just a particular individual. So I'm gonna say set status. And now where does it go? Of course, it shows me right here down below and it gives me a timestamp as to when I added it. But when I go back to the list view, you will notice over here in the right-hand side of the screen, 
here is that status update. It says who it's from, it gives me the text down below, and now everyone who has access to this project is going to see that update. Now, if I want to update the status, I can just click on this link here. I don't necessarily have to hit progress. Since I have a status update, I can click this link and it's going to take me directly back. Let's use an example where we are going to use the traffic light system here. I'm going to say red and I'm going to say, hang on, uh, what happened? Uh, oops, where'd my cursor go? What happened with our newest client? Um, let's adjust the deadline. Okay, and I'm going to set that as my status. And remember, I added a color code, so I've got this red label along with it. If I go back to the list view, now I've got a new status update. And you may be wondering, well, what happened to the, to the previous message, right? What happened to that first status update that I added? Well, of course, a status update should really be its current status, right? It should be sort of where we feel this project is currently in its current state. Um, you know, is it in a good shape? Is it in a bad shape, uh, middle of the road, that type of thing. So we can always go back to progress and see our previous updates, right? We can see a history of the, uh, of the different updates that we've added here uh, among our status updates, but we're only gonna show the latest one here in the top right corner of the screen. Looks like it's taking a bit longer to, uh, to display this time around. Now, it doesn't interfere when we are dealing with our tasks. As I click on different tasks, um, it's not going to take up more real estate. But if I don't have an active task displayed, then I'm going to see that status update. So make use of the progress section, a great way to not only communicate with the rest of your team, but add a little indicator whether you use the colors or not so that everyone on your team can see it. Now, the very last tip I want to share with you is going to allow us to access Asana information outside of the application itself. And probably one of your most used productivity tools is your own personal calendar, right? You're, you need to know where you're going to be today. You need to keep track of all of your meetings, other things that are on your daily schedule. Now, of course, Asana does have a calendar here and we can see upcoming tasks with due dates. We can get a calendar view here within Asana, but you may not be using uh, the Asana view here terribly often, right? This may not be an area of Asana that you make use of, especially if you're comparing it to your own personal calendar. So let's see how we can sync Asana with our calendar. If you select the little down arrow here beside your project, and we're going to select sync to calendar, we can either sync to our Google calendar, or we can use the iCal format, which is something that Outlook and many other calendars use. In my example, I'm going to show you how to add it to Google calendar. So here it gives us a unique URL. I'm just going to copy it. And then what we want to do is we want to get in on over to our Google Calendar itself. And if you use Google Calendar, you're going to go to other calendars and we're going to select add by URL. And this is where we want to paste that information. I'm going to select add calendar and look at that. Here I have the same information that we saw in the Asana calendar. We see it displayed here within my Google Calendar. Now, of course, only tasks that have a due date are going to show up within your calendar sync. If that task is already complete or if that task does not have a due date, it will not display here. But anything with a due date is going to display over here. You may be asking, well, why does it show up as an all day event? The simple answer is that none of these particular tasks have a specific time associated with the due date. If I did have a specific time, well, then they would display somewhere else on my calendar. But since these have only been assigned to a particular uh, date, um, they're going to appear on the all day event. So there are five different tips, five different ways that you can make use 
of some uh, Asana hacks, some Asana tips, some Asana tricks so that you can be more effective, you can be more efficient with dealing with your projects and your lists. I would love to know what was your favorite one or what's something that I didn't share that you find is very helpful when you are dealing with Asana. If you've got a particular tip that you use all the time, please share it here in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, it's very simple.